Radiant team ban. Alright, we're back with game three, guys. Orange Neo Illusion Esports versus Neo Illusion International. Very great game coming up from Orange in the first game. That SF spectacular play from Mushi. Just out carrying the entire team. Tree hitting the opposing Draw Ranger. Uh, played by Ninja Boogie, who played a spectacular game. Game 2 with the uh, Weaver. I had my doubts on solo um, on solo carrying with a Weaver, having him in the number 1 slot. But he did prove me wrong. He picked off the supports and picked off everyone else. And Muji's Dragon Knight was just not enough to deal with it. So now we have Game 3. Magnus is finally banned out. And of course, I'm your host, Lysander Zonora, bringing you your English coverage for today in the GST quarterfinals. And I'm, and I'm here with my co-caster, Vix, from Australia. So welcome. Uh, good to still be here for a game three. Oranges turn to ban. Yep, it is. Uh, any best of three that goes to a tree, of course. More Dota is always good. And to all you guys asking out in the chat, um, yep, I am Singaporean and I'm a caster from there. So it's great to be here on BTS. Uh, oh. Yeah, they're, they're really doing a lot uh, for the Dota scene and of course Dota Top for hosting this tournament, Gigabyte as well as Western Digital for sponsoring all these uh, all these goodies that we, or the winning team will be getting 1000 USD is the prize, am I right? Yep, it is and of course a lot of gaming equipment So anyway, time to go into the bands here, Nyx Assassin, Shadow Demon gonna be taken out Shadow Demon did play a big part in the last game, disrupting up the Dragon Knight a couple of times, saved him Cause a lot of trouble for New Illusion International. What do you think? He's a great hero. I mean, his his ability to disable heroes and as well put out a lot of damage uh, throughout those team fights. I, I think it's a worthy ban, and it did cause him a lot of problems, particularly early on. And um, I see the Magnus ban out. So we've seen Magnus in both game one and two so far. Each team uh, taking turns, I believe, with that hero. So that leaves Nakes in the pool. Yeah, it does give. It does leave Life Stealer in there. It does leave the Bat Rider in there. So we're gonna see who picks up Life Stealer, who picks up Bat, or is it gonna be both? It's Neo Illusion. Just gonna give away both. They do have. Are they having first pick here? I can't really tell right now. Um, yeah, they yeah. do. They do have first pick. So whatever they pick up, they pick up Life Stealer or Bat Rider. The other team will have the other. Uh, most likely, Life Stealer is just such a pain to deal with. But I do think. My prediction for this game is that the team with Bat Rider will have the upper hand here because uh, Life Stealer doesn't do too well against a Bat Rider. And, well, it's Life just my opinion. Stealer. And Life Stealer will be picked up here, by, and that's an instant Bat Rider pickup as well as a Rubik. So. Radiant and Mushy being super quick picking up those two heroes, he didn't even think twice. Yeah. And no surprises. I mean, Bat Rider initiation with the lasso is it's just so strong and you can catch out any hero at any stage and again Rubik we were talking about last game he, he's a very good utility hero even without items even without you know having a good start himself he just plays such a huge role with telekinesis with stealing those Ten those good spells I and mean, uh, we saw him play a big role in that last game and I, I think uh, Vix you want to turn down your volume a little bit I think it's still a bit too Sorry. loud for them um, I'm not so sure if my they still say mine is a bit soft, so I've already maxed mine and I don't want to bring the boost up anymore because it will add white noise. So I'm, I brought the mic even closer to me, uh, but I did go for the soundtrack earlier, uh, the sound check earlier, and you guys said it was okay, so I'm not so sure as to what happens now. Maybe I'll turn down the in-game volume, that'll help maybe. Uh, yeah. Possible is the in-game volume. Okay, so maybe this will be better now. Okay, so Oranges turn I did fix it up silencer. and alright I think we have to go through the bands and picks really fast. It's gonna be Silencer Disruptor as well as Puck uh, coming out for Neo Illusion International Orange where we pick up Silencer as well as the Rubik and the Bat Rider. So what do you think about these picks? And once again we see a silencer from Orange. It did work very well for them in game one. And here it is again in game two. Uh, game three, I mean. I, I have to say, um, first that I hope my volume's alright, I tried to turn down the mic. I really like Disruptor as a hero and we don't get to see him pick very much, but he can be a lot of fun uh, with those team fights and bringing back those heroes that are trying to run away uh, with Glint sort of thing. Silence can be very, very, very powerful, you know. Um, on the flip side, Silencer himself 
global silence just shuts down any gank attempt and will also help that rider out with his own gank attempts, um, stopping Park perhaps, say shifting out and orbing out and getting out of trouble. So both teams have got that, that power there with the ganking. Um, I think Silence worked out very well for them that game. They ran him as a support. Yeah. He could actually look to pick up a point of glaze this time. Get a bit more intel coming his way. It never hurts anyway. And Neil Lucian, um, I would like to comment a little bit on the on their lineup right now. They have a lot of silence coming their way. They have the disruptor silence. They have the glimpse. Going to catch someone out. Uh, they have the puck. And all of this, it just relies on uh, focusing down a carry that doesn't have BKB. So they might actually want to look out to be banning out a BKB carry or just pick it in such a way that Radiant Orange won't pick up a BKB back. carry because um, with auto silences, uh, with lifesteal, with puck, it's all a glimpse as well. So just going to be able to pull back any of those heroes and Disruptor, like I, I haven't mentioned this yet, but Bad Rider really, really bad against Disruptor. He comes in for that lasso, he gets glimpsed out. So he doesn't even get to continue in the fight. He breaks his lasso and he just wastes his entire ultimate. So, and the cooldown similar as well. Neil Lucian got a battle anti mage, and the clockwork. The clockwork is a very important ban here from Neil Lucian because the clockwork with the latch up can actually deny the life stealer some mobility, and also the hook shot as well as the bat, the power cocks. Yes, does go through magic immunity. So life stealer, he does not want to get kited. Uh, by the clockwork and the mana loss is definitely not going to help matters either and DK going to be banned out here from orange I'd like to point out the we weaver ban as well which uh, maybe a little bit of a tribute to how frustrating that hero was for them in the last game uh, nin ninja, um, ninja, boogie. Doing ninja, job. Boogie. Yeah, ninja boogie doing a great job on that weaver causing absolute chaos during the team fights and a lot a lot of damage so I, I think I'm not surprised they decided to ban him out. And a Darkseer, also pretty standard ban. He, he is a great team fight hero and can once that point is up in wall, it can cause all sorts of trouble for your team. So. Yeah, and if Silencer wasn't picked up, I might actually suggest uh, Enigma here for il il New Illusion because Enigma with the Disruptor Silence is actually quite huge. Uh, it's actually Ten pretty huge remaining. with that Wombo combo coming out of that. Uh, it's going to be very big. But right now, uh, New Illusion, they already, they already have the bomb uh, for the Life Stealer to sit in the, um, what do you call it, transportation Reserve in form of Puck. And now they were looking to take up their hard Carry as well as the other Trilane support. Oh uh, no, I mean the, ca the hard Carry is Life Stealer, but they could run him in the offlane like Zenith often does. They do. Uh, they run him on the suicide lane, but nope, it's gonna be good. So it might be a side lane invoker or a solo mid invoker. It remains to be seen. Puck could be on the off lane. I've seen it do it a million times. Uh, invoker gonna be very helpful as well uh, with his sun strike if he does does decide to go for it. Or the tornado into the EMP also very disruptive in fights. But invoker needs his spells, and silencer is just one of the best uh, against invoker. It's an interesting pick. I mean, you don't see Invoker picked up Ten as much anymore, remain. but it, he does have so much to bring to the game in terms of team fight Five or in terms remain. of just pure damage as well earlier on in the piece. And uh, also very, very fun to watch play as well. So I, I think that's a, it's a good pick. And uh, Puck off lane. I mean, I think, who did we see pick up the Puck before when they played him? Um, yeah. The puck. I can't actually remember. But he did a great job of orbing out, uh, phasing out, and was causing... A lot, of, a lot of trouble by just avoiding everything thrown at him, so I think there'll be no trouble with him being on the offline. Yep, and it's going to be a Luna, so finally, Mushi gets his hero, the Luna. The Luna is going to be very strong in that tri lane, especially with two other range heroes with him, uh, Rubik as well as the, the Silencer. It's going to be hitting very hard with the bonus 14 right off the bat at level, four, uh, level 1. So they're going to be dealing a lot of damage, and Luna is going to be able to chase people down uh, very quickly. But again, Luna is a very paper hero, and if she gets caught out by Life Stealer, she can go down in a couple of hits. So, but this is a BKB carry, I guess, in a sense. But she's a very soft kind of carry, remaining. and BKB is usually not the best item to go onto her seconds, first. You want to get up remaining. other items before actually having to rush the BKB. If you are forced to rush the BKB, it kind of limits your damage uh, damage output. And again, gonna give Sanking to No Illusion International. Last picking that Sanking. As always, this Sanking, this time, it will not be a solo mid Sanking, it will be the support Sanking, like I told you about, probably going to go on Lei and Orange uh, Esports, they have the last pick for this. And it was a great Sanking that last game, did such a good job with those Barrow Strikes and a few very, very solid epicenters. So I'm looking forward to see that play together again, and a Night Stalker. Um, yeah, it's going to be buying a lot of space for them. Uh, Night Stalker is kind of a space space maker. Uh, he makes a lot of space for the team to be 
to fight around with. Uh, Night Stalker, he just runs around causing chaos, making sure that all the supports are forced to just bring support to the lane that he's attacking. And does give the hard carry some time to farm. But then again, uh, if you want to put a Luna against the Lifestealer, I would like to give the Lifestealer the advantage. But then... With the glimpse as well, Night Stalker, if he does go for TP, uh, TP ganks, he can actually get sent back uh, if he's spotted. So, Night Stalker, until he gets up that BKB, the glimpse is going to be very, very horrible for him. Uh, he charges remaining. towards someone, gets the void off, and gets glim back, a glimpse back. Uh, not going to do him any favors. Five and we're going to see remaining. how the Sand King he actually does the rotation this time. I'm really interested to see how you go. I'm just a. Oh, wrong, yep, wrong overlay. Alright. Alright, this time guys, uh, I will be keeping, uh, I'll be changing the, the stats a lot more, I'll be switching between current goal, net worth, hero, hero levels, as well as show more of the graphs like you guys requested. Uh, hopefully the sounds are okay, the lag doesn't seem to be coming anymore, there are no drop frames on my side, so all is good. We're going to have a good game 3, there are a lot of delays, but the quarterfinals are going to be continuing here. Best of 3, this is essentially a best of 1 now between Orange and Neo Illusion International. Big shout out to Total Talk, Gigabyte, uh, Western Digital, as well as Corsair for... They are our sponsors for this tournament, so very excited to see. I'm um, like Senna Zenora, joined here by Vix from Australia, so... I expect a big game coming up here. This is a very interesting lineup. Not normal stuff you normally see, the Magnus, the, the Magnus and all his shenanigans. We do see a very rare Disruptor as well as a Silencer uh, come out. Night Stalker, also not the most common uh, of all... Night Stalker, not the most common of all hero picks. And Orange doing the same thing they did in every other game going straight for that jungle, looking out for the offlane hero, and uh, they'll again not find anybody and just drop down some boards. I'm trying to fix my microphone level. 30 seconds to go. I think it's okay now, they're not complaining anymore, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah, they're not complaining anymore, because I did turn your volume down here from my side so that you don't have to do it. Okay. Yeah. It does lower the in-game sound, which is kind of loud as well. I think it's drowning me out, so I think that's been the problem all while. Uh, did we want to go through heroes? Uh, oh yeah, we have to go through heroes, I didn't orange. see that. Uh, I'll go through and they're new off. int and you can go through orange, I guess. So Blast going to be an invoker solo mid. Uh, question mark going to be on a park off lane. Uh, Ninja Boogie going to be take up the hard carry. Once again, Lei is going to be on I Sanking. Hachiko going to be Disruptor and <laughs> Sanking. I'm looking towards this uh, Le uh, Lei Sanking. Okay, you go through orange right now. All right, question mark, we have Puck up on the solo long lane. No, uh, orange. Oh, sorry, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Rubik is by net. We have uh, Extinct up on the Silencer in here in the tri lane, and farming in the tri lane will be Mushi on the Luna. In the mid, we have a Night Stalker run by Ohio, and finally, the pick here is actually going to be a Jungle Bat run by KY, so not actually running a hero on the off lane at all. Yep, so once again, the, the carries are going to be exchanging farm, and once again, Mushi is going to be getting uncontested farm. Uh, Park does poke in here, sees the uh, silencer exiting, already going for first point last word. That's going to give him a smack to the head, and he's going to back off there, um, exiting. Just going to be hugging the trees, just going to be denying Park out of XP range. Rubik, meanwhile, going to go for the pool. So Park is going to be rotating towards middle here. I think he wants to go for Ancient Stack, or... I'm not so sure what he wants to go for. Maybe get some experience in middle lane. But he's going to have a hard time up top. Mushi's going to get uncontested farm. Once again, Neo Illusion International going to be giving all the respect to Orange. Uh, Orange Mushi there. So last hit there, 7 to 4 on Mushi already. Lifestealer matching it with 7 to 0. Bad Rider getting 7 small creeps here in the jungle, so it doesn't really count. Night Stalker 5 to 1 compared to Invokers 4 to 0. Going for that point in Exort, so going for the Sun Strike build. The advantage of having the bat in the mid lane is um, just the fact that he does get that XP and he can, if he, if he does it right, he can get that goal up very, very quickly and rush that blink dagger and have it as a little bit of a surprise. And again, we see question mark trying to go for the Korea snipe like in game one, but not going to get it. Yeah, he's going to be backing off here. Level one puck, not going to be achieving a lot here. Not going to be achieving a lot. Hachiko going to find an invis rune for himself, picks it up. And apparently now I can't be heard in Dota TV. One experience the other. And, well... I think you just have to turn it on, I guess, your open mic. And here comes Disruptor. He does have a pointed glimpse as well as uh, Thunder Strike. So, Ohio, if he's not careful, he could go down. But he's very tanky right now. Uh, you have to wait for Blah to get up his cold snap, I guess. 
but this shouldn't be enough. Rubik just rotate in. Net already going to be spotted out by Hachiko here. And Ohio going to be bottling up. I think he's going to bottle crow this. Yeah, the Korea will be coming in. Trying to get a uh, trying to get a kill, and there'll be a sentry ward placed here by the disruptor. Going to be dewarding uh, the middle lane ward. So Night Stalker going to be denied a lot of uh, vision here. And Night Stalker does have poorer vision in the day for you guys that didn't know that. So it does limit his ability to roam between the lanes. Okay, hopefully I found a good level with my microphone now. I seem to have turned it down too much with you turning it down too. So uh, apologies for the sound issues, guys. And uh, hopefully you can hear me, and that I'm not drowning out, Lysander again. Yep, uh, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just tweak your volume from my side, so that it goes yep. out to them a lot, a little bit softer. And for you guys asking, it is Ohio. He says Ogor, but he's Ohio. Ohio's a Night Stalker, and he's playing up against Invoker, who has 18 last hits, and Night Stalker using Void to farm up has 10 for one, going for the border crow strat here. And meanwhile, San King Lei, already 3 points up on him, gets the boots, going to probably go for a TP and might want to rotate. He has a smoke at the back of him, want to go with the Disruptor. Disruptor is still up at level 2, so not optimal for him, but he will be going for the pool right now. Batrider, meanwhile, still going to be in the jungle, stacking up 4 points of Napalm on this big creep camp. And he'll get a lot of golden XP from this creep camp once he actually pulls it out. That's, it's tricky to do and, and it does take a while, so if he gets interrupted, it doesn't work out so well, but... It, it's a pretty good method on a Batrider. Yep. And kind of fun to watch too. And Illusion Rune. Lei going to be very cleverly hiding in this Roshan Pit. Roshan Pit doesn't give any vision here. And Night Stalker going to be spotted out here. Is there going to be a Brow Strike? There's going to be a Brow Strike. And Harassment. There's going to be a Sanky. There's going to be a Sun Strike as well. Going to be blocking up Lei. It's going to be blocking Ohio. But Ohio just a bit too quick to the boots. Going to be running around Lei. So Lei not going to get the block off there. But doing a lot of Harassment to Ohio. Ohio uh, having no bottle charge for that one. Again, we see Radiant Mushi with his two supports. With the Lunar right Blessing. Going to be taking down the top tier one. And... Right, now we're going to look a little bit at the net no worth. 2.1k here, did. Mushi goes for the Tranquil Radiant Boots. And uh, 2.1k uh, on the lifesteal as well. So Ninja Boogie and Mushi pretty much farming the same amount. Yeah, it's sort of, Radiant they're both having a pretty pretty uninterrupted dead. time. Although here we have TP coming in straight oh, away. To open Moons <laughs> goes out on Mushi. And here comes Stan. And this will be the first blood. Invoker will claim it. Mushi drops. And net in danger as well. Kinetic Flare going to hold him in. Nope, not going to hold him in. But the Thunder Strike does keep in here. And he will go down as well. So two kills going the way of Neo Illusion International. Great rotation. Uh, Mushi, his, Mushi's kind of strategy, I guess. His timing attacks have been, well, I guess, deciphered by Neo Illusion International. Two games in a row, he did the same thing. He went for the timing push. After getting a certain level, he just went for the push. And this time, they were prepared for it. They rotated in time. I really like... Yeah, I was gonna say I really like Ninja Boogie's decision. I mean, he was having free farm time at his life on the bottom lane, but he still TP'd in and got a kill and an assist. And like I said, Lei, he's just so good with his rotation as Sand King. And he gets a free pick off here on Ohio in the middle lane. Uh, Ohio, once again, not getting a good start on his Night Stalker. Gonna get harassed back, only level 5. Gonna be dying just before the start of the night time. So, the advantage here is he does end up at base. He does have a TP with uh, full HP, but he is only up at level 5. Only one point Trouble Hunter. So, not gonna be as fast as he, wished, uh, as he would wish he was. But Mushi, gonna be pushing the, the, the bottom tower with uh, Bad Riser as well. Dyer's mid tower won't last much longer. Now the guy's too soft, so why am I too soft? Um, bottom tower seen better days. It's quite frustrating for me as well. Uh, the mic is right at my mouth, so uh, I'm gonna just tweak it a little bit. Hopefully, that's better. And yeah, is, is Vic still too loud for you guys? I just turned my. No, boost uh, uh, it's okay, I don't think you have to do, it, do anything. I'll just lower the sound from here. Alright, so back to the game. Uh, we're going to check out the gold graph just very quickly here. 1.5k is mm -hmm. the goal, goal lead for Neo Illusion International, of course, with the first blood and the two kills. Uh, defending the tier 1 successfully as well. So not giving any gold away of orange might actually look to deny this very short, shortly. That's why question mark just heading, hanging around the tower looking for the deny. And Night Stalker, meanwhile, forced to stay in the middle lane to get experience during his night time. This is not something you want. Uh, Night Stalker is supposed to be making the place, giving you the time and space to farm up. But K, I, X, Y, gonna be farming the Radiant Jungle. A bit ballsy if you ask me. Uh, Lei could actually go for the Barrow Strike here. There is a rotation in here from Disruptor, so he's in trouble. Barrow Strike, gonna hit him. Barrow Strike, not gonna get him. So, very, very nice location. Just this little niche. Yeah, just a little niche there. Uh, but Mushi will be pushing towards his tower for the second time. So second time is a charm. Sanking does rotate in. 
and it's a Nyx Bomb. So Sanking's gonna walk in innocently, gonna get the lift on as though Eclipse gonna kill him immediately. A bit of a mistake there. Mushi is gonna be banged away, get hit away by Ninja Boogie, but Ninja Boogie will get a pick off here. So a uh, Luna for a Sanking and a Puck, but here comes Night Stalker. He has a Void. Here comes the Sun Track as well. Ninja Boogie might not survive this. Rage is in the three seconds. He does get killed by the Fade Ball. Uh, Ohio drops really low there with the back of that Sun Track, but still. Blah. Be, and here comes the glimpse. Is that gonna be a glimpse? Down the strike. It's gonna go on the night stalker, but not gonna be enough. There might be a follow-up sun strike very shortly. Uh, we're gonna see if you can see it. Let's see it. No, nope. Bad Rider comes in here. Might go for the lasso. Might he want to go for the lasso? Cold snap up on him. KY is dropping very low. Goes for the lasso. Wants to pull the invoke up on the high ground. He does pull him out. The high ground gets stuck there uh, as well, but the firefly is gonna run out. There is the sun strike coming in. Nope, not gonna get it. And Blah is actually going to die. Illusion, Illusion picked up by uh, picked up by question mark here. Mushi. Gonna be fine with the illusion. And here we go. Barrow strike here on Rubik. Net. Oh dear. Here comes the Rubik. And Rubik actually does get the tower. And Life Stealer does come in. And Net will pay with his life. And he will go down. Uh, Slate gets an epicenter at the back of that. Level 6 already on him. A lot of experience and goal on him. There was a lot of trades there back and forth from both teams. But if you could look at the XP, it's still golden XP is still very yeah, even. It did slightly favor uh, orange for a little while, but there was enough trading. But that, that whole fight was just negated by both sides. And Barashrak again comes off from the, the Sanking. Epicenter to follow. Cold snap on top of him. Mushi is going to drop. Once again, one to three on that guy. Net worth. I'm going to see the kills, deaths, and assists right now. It's going to be three for one on the life stealer, two for one on the invoker. Uh, and of course, Mushi, one for three, not doing the best in this game here. Luna. Dyer's top needs to, getting beat down. Needs to be strong enough for the mid game or she'll just get crushed. Right now only sitting at the Tranquil Boots uh, Bracer as well as the Rope of Magi and Ohio meanwhile. Um, gonna be spending more of that time farming one to one on him. Doesn't really get a lot out of this night time. Uh, it's gonna be ending soon. It's already halfway through that one. And blah. Doing a good job as an invoker, just an aided landing support. A little bit unfortunate getting pulled by the bad rider to the high ground there. But nothing you could do about that one. And Luna's definitely falling a fair way behind this. Um, she needs to try and find a little bit of room to farm, but they're not leaving him alone up there. And part of that is a factor of the aggression that the Orange have been putting out on that tower. They're forcing the TPs, but that's also forcing team fights. I don't think Mushi's ready to take. And Night Stalker is waiting in the woods here. Wants to get a pick off on uh, Puck, but won't find it. Mushi has to be very careful here. Sanking is here. And he Luna right now, without the BKB, will be in danger. But Mushi is just bait at this point. There are a lot of heroes here. Uh, Silencer does have his ultimate. This might be dangerous for them. Global Science, I expect it to come any moment now. Off gonna hit him. Sunstrike as well. And unable to opt there. Eclipse gonna be completely wasted. Nope, gonna be killing the life there. So not completely wasted. But the Global Silence is gonna be doing a lot of job, a lot of work here. Lay is gonna go down as well. So it's a two for nothing trade here. Oh, Ohio going to chase down the pump. Uh, we'll not be finding him. But a great fight here from Orange. This is why Silencer is such a strong hero. You initiate a Mushi and you can't follow up because your spells are muted to you. And they're going to go with the fortification here. Uh, Silencer will get the last hit on that tower. But Mushi stays alive, gets 1.2k uh, 1.2k go. This guy, uh, he does farm very fast. Although he gets picked off, I won't count him out, count him out of this um, fight just yet. But meanwhile, question mark. What does he have? He doesn't have a lot of items. Well, it's an taking down the life off stealer. Park. Yeah, offlane park and taking down the life stealer. That fight definitely jumped jumped Orange back up into the party. So uh, that was that was a good drop down. He sort of teleported straight into all of them, and silence meant he couldn't really do anything to get out. Yep. Look at hero level. Park's not even up at level five, and neither is a disruptor. So Park's at is even lower level than the supports here on Orange. So although New In did have a couple of good fights, picking off Luna, Mushi going down a couple of times in the early game. Um, they still did not have a lot of levels on their supports, whereas the orange supports are getting very high up. And once again, we see a tower deficit for New Illusion International. Orange just very aggressive on the towers. Yeah, and I mean, they, they might be feeling that if they can be aggressive on those towers, that opens up their own jungle for farming and that they're warding up very defensively across this mid lane as well. And, and just trying to give the Luna a little bit of space because she, she's the big player, Mushi the big player on that Luna. Once, once he gets a BKB up, that, that hero is going to be scary. Yep. The thing about taking tower tier 1 too early is that although it does give you a lot of gold, it does build a lot of space for the um, Radiant heroes to farm up and question mark has to be very careful. Night Stalker does come in for a rotation. Nope, they're going to think better that Ohio picks up Illusion Rune, pops it and will be running around right now. He does have one point in the ultimate and daytime does hit. So. 
He's gonna lose a lot of his power, and with all these tier 1 towers down, he doesn't really have the diving potential to actually go in for a kill right now. So, Ninja Boogie gonna get some space. Oppo Venom up on him, so as if open wounds isn't enough, he's gonna go for even more slow uh, over here. Um, it's all it's just sort of interesting to see the life dealer has sort of opted out of farming where he was originally and has just moved to the jungle, but... I don't know, they don't really have the vision to protect him there, so they are going to have to uh, put two supports to babysit him pretty much the whole time. Otherwise, as you can see, Orange aren't going to leave him alone in there for very long. Yeah, but it's very difficult to catch out a bad um, lifestealer, especially with Rage, because they don't really have a lot of heart stuns other than the Rubik. Um, and here comes a glimpse on Luna, so Luna going to get caught up. Hachiko just being a bit cheeky there with the glimpse. But he wouldn't have it for now 30 seconds, and he doesn't have his ultimate just yet. He wants to get that up. Uh, the ultimate is very good for diving, and here comes the global silence here. They're going to catch out this lifestealer. Lifestealer so did. Sunstrike is going to come out, and it's a Rubik Sunstrike. So it's a Rubik Sunstrike, so Lifestealer drops once again. So I think it's even there on the deaths of both carries. Four deaths. Okay, so it's three deaths and three kills for Lifestealer, but two, death, two kills and four deaths for Mushi. But Mushi gonna be with that ganking party so he will be a lot uh, better off there but now orange are sticking up as a, uh, sticking up together and they will be sharing the experience a lot so they might be suffering some experience loss and barrel strike with the four stuff glimpse goes out he's there going a cold snap there's gonna be a cold snap sunstrike gonna miss completely no sunstrike that was rubik sunstrike ohio just goes goes for the counter void and extinct picks up a kill with the last one again not for going for any points in glaives so uh, a little bit unfortunate for him again. And Blink Dagger already ready for the KYXY. And question mark, gonna be going for that rune, not gonna get it. The Flame Break, gonna be pushing him away. So, very great play here. Good play here from KYXY. Gonna get himself a regen rune, always gonna help. Life still has his drums up now, so he can be a little bit more tanky again, harder to bring down. And he actually had that board out before that last fight, um, last death as well. So, he didn't lose too much in that. Well, Net sitting at boots as well as Magic Wand and Silencer already getting up that Arcane Boots. The last word just doing a lot of work for him. Very surprised to see him not getting any Glaives. Uh, so much in he could have stolen. He's already involved in 5 kills, that's 10 intel. But deciding is not worth it for him, so he's not even going to get it. Goes for more points in Curse of Silence. Uh, does do a lot of damage, especially under the, under the Global Science, he does do a lot of DPS. And Mushi, going to be... Going for towers once again, this guy loves his towers. He's gonna be munching away at this one. And I don't think he's gonna go for this, but nope, there is gonna be a Sunstrike follow up. And Rubik's gonna drop really low, and Disruptor's gonna pick him off. Silence goes out, Ohio can't follow up, and here comes a Koi on two. And Nice Knocker, go no, tower denied, so Pup's gonna go for a Silence. Nice Knocker goes down, Mushi's gonna be slowed up, Barrel Strike. And there's gonna be three lost, and a tower denied, so very good here for New Int. Uh, Solid drink call in the middle there, and uh, three heroes dropping down. So that was a good fight for near Int, and they should have. Can't do nothing they, they'll make a big dent in this tower. Although Glyph is going to pop. Mid -tower could use a I think it will at the back of this creep wave as well as uh, five heroes. So five heroes already hitting away the tower, and Dyer's drums charge tower even pop. Land. So this tier one's going to go down. First tower for near Int. So good for them. They're going to get some the bonus go coming their way. Life stealer takes the last tower. hit as well. So he's already going for it towards that armlet. Helm of Iron Wheel flown out to him. And uh, KY just putting a little bit of pressure on that top lane there, pushing the creep wave down to the tower. While that, that push was happening in the middle. Lay, I think Lay might be skipping the arcane boots here, I'm not sure, but he might be rushing a blink dagger this time. It's possible Disruptor goes for the arcane boots instead, but... Now, right now, they don't have any arcanes on the team. And Puck, still very staffed here, going for a four-man smoke gang. Gonna leave Lifesteal up top to get a little bit more farming his way. Glimpse, 4 points in that, so Hachiko will be looking to pick up someone. And the last sanking we saw from Lei was more of a carry sanking, so I I'd expect, yeah, the mana boots out from him, and hopefully more epicenters, because a lot of the time his mana issues meant that he would charge in and then have nothing to follow up with, so... Unfortunately for them, uh, their smoke gang's gonna... yield no results whatsoever, because all of Orange are also sticking as one, smoking up, uh, and not actually going to defend this tower, but Lifestealer looks to be attacking this tower alone, so there might be a rotation in the end, it might be a clash coming soon. Bad Rider has the blink, he can actually go in for this. He does have the blink, he's gonna get the Disruptor, the only one that can actually stop him here. Global Silence follows up, and Disruptor will be lost here, they will be just letting him go. But question mark, getting Silence up, Epicenter gonna come here, and here comes the Epicenter, gonna pick up Bad Rider as well. No, Bad Rider gonna survive through that Eclipse. 
does not get anyone. Disruptor buys out for that. Rubik actually steals the epicenter. Not getting a lot, but the infest gonna do a lot of damage, but Ninja Boogie. Just gonna TP out of there. Is he gonna get out of there alive? No, Flame Break's gonna stop him just a bit. Triple kill here from Ohio. That life stopper just getting so much out of that fight. 1.8k go. That's gonna work towards his BKB fund. You already see the Ochre Club for Chase up. And that was a horrible fight. Yep. It was a great steal by Net, though, picking up yep. that epicenter. Uh, he did charge through three of the heroes then with it. And Life Stealer, even though he is really tanky, he's still just dropping down and his rage wore out too. So yeah. he couldn't really do it. Silencer just can't do. Um... Life Stealer can't deal with Rage because Life Stealer, because of his Rage, he usually doesn't get BKB. So if you throw Global Silence on top of him, he can't do anything. If you go the last word onto him, he has to decide. Open Wounds, Infest, or Rage. So if he does Radiant go for the Open Wounds and get silenced by your, uh, by, your, by your last word, he can't really go into the Rage and he will be picked off by the Night Stalker. Night Stalker has a silence as well, so Ninja Boogie has to be really quick on those fingers to get, uh, to get the Rage off. Has a lot of... and even through the Rage, the global science goes through it, and if he gets uh, hit by the global science, followed by the last word, the last word will proc, and he will be silenced for enough for the six seconds and disarmed. Not to mention taking a lot of damage. So that's going to be very painful for the life stealer to deal with. And Lei and Hachiko looking for this bat rider they know is in their jungle. Are they going to glimpse him? Dad? It's going to glimpse. Goodbye. Bat rider is probably going to drop from this. The ultimate use for the sun strike comes in as well. KYXY will be incinerated. And yep. Well, That's a good he had it coming, I mean, yep. uh, he oh. was farming up the Radiant Jungle for an extended period of time under the Observer Wars as well. So he thought he could get away with that Blink Dagger and all, but Glimpse just makes all these kind of escapes useless. Bla meanwhile has picked up a 4 star. Picks mm -hmm. up a 4 star and last hits and denies 109 on... Oh, so it looks like Mushi has fallen behind him of the last hit. A bit surprising there. Mushi, 100 last hits on him, going straight for the Black King bar. Uh, getting picked off a little bit too many times by the spells coming out. Life Stealer, 109 last hits on him. What's he got? Has he got an armlet up? Probably got an armlet flying out to him right now. Yep, the armlet's flying out to him right now. So the, the Life Stealer will be doing a lot more damage in the following team fight. Uh, wow, Puck actually going for BKB. Look at him. He's uh, obviously feeling the pressure a little bit of how silence. squishy he is compared to Luna and the pressure of Silencer. So BKB does make a lot of sense here. And um, the night night times come and I'm sort of waiting to see Orange set up for another sort of gank train with their Night Stalker. But at the moment they seem content just to push back out those lanes. Yep. And Late and Invoker have gone for a smoke gang here. The Night Stalker illusion, not going to be able to spot them out. Uh, mm -hmm. Night Stalker pops the darkness to extend the night time a little bit longer. Hachiko going to be spotted out by this aggressive observer ward here in the secret shop. But Hachiko just doing a lot of work with that glimpse, just catching heroes out. And Mushi, if he's not careful, although he is very close to that BKB, could be caught out as well. But Ninja Boogie not going to overextend there. Amlet already ready for him. Going to TP the bottom lane, bottom lane where there is farm to be had. They don't really want to take a fight with Orange at the night time, and I mean. Nightstalk is sitting there with a double damage room bottled up as well, so they might not look to sort of slow down this push and rather trade it themselves. Experience and goal still very balanced across the board right here. Uh, oh, yeah. here comes Bat Rider. Bat Rider just eating through the trees here, going to look for a pickoff. So this is one of the strengths of Bad Rider, you can come up, uh, you can arm all the way behind enemy lines and it won't see you coming. And with the double damage rune, this tier 2 tower is bound to drop and Luna will have his BKB. Glyph is forced to pop so they might want to defend this. They're not going for a trade, not going for anything. So they're just going to give up this tower, waste the Glyph as well. Like Sunstrike's not going to hit. Part of the problem with Life is he does need to keep farming, whereas Luna can play a role in these team fights already and uh, she's got a BKB up now. Yep. Has a BKB up, and that will be keeping him alive a lot longer. Uh, but I'm not sure if BKB actually does block Life Stealer slow once it's casted on you. But um, I don't think it does. So far, Magic Immunity doesn't really stop slows. But Lei Hachiko still looking for an opening here. Uh, Lei saving it for the Blink Dagger, so not going for the Arcane Boots. Wow, they actually found the Observer Ward, so very good from them. And Lei <laughs> gonna be taking this time to farm up a little bit here. At the top lane, go to work towards his blink dagger. Already 1.5k go on him. Going to get that blink dagger in about 600. Life still on the bottom lane. Night Stalker will drop down. Could sun strike. Just wow. helping out there. So I think he was always going to drop down there. And that's and a killing spree ended as well. So 
more gold for Ninja Boogie, and he's going for the Ogre Club. Is this going to be a BKB life stealer? Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Realizing what we realized earlier that, that rage is really nothing for Silent so. Well, it's possible that they are going for, uh, he's going for a Hilbert, but hey, it could be a BKB lifestealer. And it would definitely take Orange by surprise here. And perhaps they're even turning into, tuning into the stream, so let's listen in the background. <laughs> Taking the advice of the casters. And it's going to be a pause out, so Wheat calls out from Extinct. So meanwhile, goal and experience very well. I say goal is two thousand in favor of orange. Well, at this stage, not really that much to talk about. Neo Illusion International three thousand experience in uh, advantage here. So we're gonna check out the hero levels just a little bit, and you can see that life stealer is up there. Fifteen uh, level fifteen, even without the hand of Midas. Level fifteen, Invoker level twelve, Mushi. Uh, and it's second run up as level 12 Luna and Sand King as well as the pack level 10 and Disruptor level 8, Rubik level 8 just heading off the pack and now Go 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 calls out from Extinct and they'll be looking to push down the bottom lane want to take out this All tier right, 2 for the Radiant Luna's not looking too bad in terms of net worth but both the Lifestealer and the Invoker are only just tailing behind her so M M Mushi's definitely getting that farm up well ahead of those two heroes but needs to keep the pressure on otherwise lifestealer like we've seen many many games once he gets those items he's just impossible to kill and puts out so much damage yeah and he would just beast through everything he's farming up the ancients now too getting a bit more gold nice stalkers working towards his bkb we'll have it soon in about 1.1k uh but meanwhile net's going to hide very deep in the jungle here not wanting to be spotted out blah uh gonna be walking in with his team want to take out tier one tower uh the uh -huh. second one for this game i think Drum charge popped. Oh, the drum charge popped. Was there a drum charge used? I'm not so sure. No, yeah. But Sankin this does has the dagger now. Yeah, he just has enough for his entire combo, so he doesn't want to spend any mana. And here comes the global silence with the bad rider. Gonna go on the life stealer. Life stealer popping his armlet. Gonna toggle the armlet. So Ninja Boogie gonna look to infest in the teammate. Yeah, infest in the teammate. Here comes the epic center with the blink. And there's a big fight. Invoker throws his entire arsenal and the entire team. Team. And Ohio dropping very low. Mushi gets two kills. Mushi gets one more kill. Life stealer goes down. Blah. TPing out. Does he get gets loose and beamed up? So that's another hero going down. So four for one here. It looked to be a turnaround fight, but no. And now it's a full team wipe here. Orange coming out on top of that fight. Uh, Bad Rider, 24 last hits. Uh, 24 seconds left in the sidelines. What we're talking about. And a whole team right here for Orange. So Orange, that BKB that just doing wonders. Epicenter did absolutely nothing but slow them down. But Eclipse was dealing a lot of damage to everyone in the team fight. Yeah, that, that was a very, very rough fight for New Inch. I mean, that they had the right idea charging into and uh, Nakes in there jumping into the puck and everything but the, just the uh, damage output by Mushi obliterated through those lower health heroes I mean Sand King himself only has 900 health That's why I said about the global silence with the combination coming out Luna is afraid of spells and pretty much any burst new coming her way uh, Night Stalker doesn't want to get impeded by any disables and Bad Rider, when he grips someone he doesn't want to get glimpsed up so that's where the global silence comes in the minute Bad Rider latches onto someone, it's a global silence. There is no time for any reaction, no time for any saves, and the hero that gets gripped by the Bad Rider just dies. It's a really good combo coming out, and I, that, which is why I, I just, I just very puzzled. I'm just very puzzled as to why a lot of teams don't run silence. And silence is actually a very strong hero, and Sunshine is going to scout up Roshan. Not going to find anything in there. So it's going to be a Sanjay for life. They're not going to be a BKB. Yeah, I, I did wonder. I mean, it it does make sense in the situation with the silence and everything, but uh, he he's just looking for that tankiness and that damage output. Uh, meanwhile, Luna charging through those ancients. She's doing so much damage now. Uh, Mushi has his eagle song. Think about that's a big. Ninja uh, Boogie is, is whether he goes for the Hilbert or he goes for the SMY. I think it's SMY. You've seen a lot more life stealers do this. And Bad Rider does have his lasso, and you know, Barrel Strike goes out. Mushi Mushi gets. Sun strike up, they say go to go for the BKB and again another latch here. But this time there is no global silence. Global silence goes off at the last moment, but Bad Riders already sent back to the uh, to the mid lane. So they're gonna fight four and five here, but still doing a good job here. Stolen glimpse here from Rubik. Here comes the eclipse. And Mushi drops really low. It's life still gonna go on the last beam. Does hit onto him. Mushi drops very low. Here comes the, the epicenter and the meat here. Gonna drop right onto Extinct's head. Sanking dies here. Ohio just going to town on everyone, blah blah. 
gonna be hit down. And it's a triple kill once again for Nightstop. And things look really bad for uh, Neo in losing two team fights. That's two team wipes already. Uh, going away of Orange. Another two, another trade of five heroes for one. And in his case, it was only the support. Luna dropping really, really low, but. That, that's very hard for them, and it'll also be a rush loss to them as well. And Roshi, meanwhile, he picks up an Eagle song, and we'll be getting his Roshan as well. Down and fortify their structures. You know, it won't be feeling too good about that one. Uh, losing two teammates in a row just because uh, of that Silencer pickup. Silencer is something, if, you, if your team knows how to utilize it, it's a really strong hero, because fighting for the first five seconds of their engagement without spells is really huge. Um, hopefully a lot of teams will be Dyer's looking to realize that very shortly and down. I expect to see a lot more silences in TI3. Um, hopefully. There's a lot of heroes in the pool now, so there's so much choice, so many options. But I agree, Silence is very strong and not just as a support, the role that we've seen him played out twice today, but also as that soul in mid. Uh, it's good defensively as well as offensively because Global Silence, if you want to use it just when the enemy heroes blink in or just when they use half the spells, if you time it right, they get like some kind of half ass initiation which puts them out of position. So you don't even have to go to them, they go to you and they just get silenced up and then you can just follow up with the counter initiation with the Eclipse, with the Bad Rider grip and that's really huge. Of, of course, it can be used offensively like we have seen. Bad Rider just gripping someone and the Silencer just immediately drops the Global Silence. Um, but the last one, Global yeah. Silence was not done and here comes the grip. And here comes Bad Rider, going to be catching out the Disruptor as well. Sankey go drop very low, trying to save his buddy there but Disruptor uh, not going to get out of there alive. Global Silence off cooldown in 3 seconds, so we will have more of that soon enough. And Luna, Mushi just going to be very out position. Goes for Luna's and Beam, wants to pick off Lei here. Wants to go for a solo kill, does he want to go for a solo kill? Nope, just going for the tower as usual. Mushi just likes his goal, likes his tower, will just be hitting away at his tower right now. And Blah goes for the cold snap on him. Here comes the Rubik with the 4 staff, going to be throwing Blah back here, but not even going to bother. Mushi just going man mode on his tower, Butterfly already up on him, Aegis as well. And this game just spiraling out of control for New Illusion. They look good in game 2, they look good in the start of this game as well, but um, things are just going out of control for them. Losing two team fights really set them very far behind. 10,000 gold difference and experience more than 10,000. It's those team fights and also the pick off with the Batrider, just just giving Orange that little bit of extra advantage. And now Mushi with this farm, it, it just sort of skyrockets a little bit. The glaives munching through those creep waves in the towers, and uh, Orange still have their three tier three, uh, tier two towers up, all on pretty much full health. So they're, they're looking pretty comfortable now, and I, I think you need to really pull something out to uh, to beat them here. Makes his farming up but he has only got his armlet and the sand, so he's well and truly behind the 14k net worth of the Lunar. Radiant's bottom tower right now, New In, they have to look to pick out the Silencer, but Silencer, Dyer's look at him, he's just tower. hiding in the trees, he's nearly impossible to pick off, and meanwhile, Radiant Orange has been ha Orange has been starting the fight throughout this entire game. They just jump in with the Bad Rider, run in with Radiant's the Night Stalker, tower. and just drop the Global Silence on top of that, Dyer's and Night Stalker just gets his way, people. Down. They can't even find the opening on the on the silence. The silence is just standing all the way back here. He can't even get picked off. And even if he does drop, he will have the buyout for an instant, uh, for an instant global silence. Mushi gets barrel striked up, but not gonna care. He does have his ages. He's just gonna ignore it. The golden XP difference isn't as big as we've seen in other games, but it is sitting at 10k both for gold and XP. So that's favoring orange as well. Just showing the head start that they've really got in this game. But Invoker does have a very strong anti-pushing uh, arsenal spells. Meanwhile, Life Stealer sitting infested inside Puck, just waiting patiently to blink in and take on that wave. But Orange have just decided to hang around on the high ground. D Ward. Yep. Miss. Gonna just uh, put Neo in on the toes here. Denying them off the vision and Bad Rider. And right now we see Puck going to be the transport for Lifestealer here and also keep him off the target of Bat Rider so someone else is going to be gripped and Lifestealer is going to pop right out and hopefully the fight will go better for him and it's even better if he pops out while the Global Science is on so he doesn't get affected and there's going to be a smoke gang so Neil In looking to make something out of this I'm going to try and leap around behind them no. uh, not a bad strategy when there's this sort of 
standoff type thing happening at your and ship. And Kinetic buying some time here, so Rubik might get caught out. Sniper, no, Sansa gets caught out here, and they might get going to follow up. There's going to be a follow barrel strike, and there's going to be the global science, and there's going to be problems all around. Mushi will get one kill. Bad Rider will pick off the puck on the back lines, and Hachiko, uh, they did go for a very good fight here, but no, nope, Ninja Boogie is going to pick off, and he will drop buys out. He's coming back into the fight. KYXY doesn't have the blink. Nice talker can't run through the kinetic field. His BKB is expanded by Mushi. Still not using his Aegis just yet. His Butterfly. Sunstrike tries to get something out of this, but not gonna get in this. And this will be bought Rex. 32 minutes in. Ninja Boogie just not being able to carry his team this round. Like I said at the start of the draft, whoever picks Life Stealer will have a problem in this game. Because he will be giving away Bad Rider, and Bad Rider is just absolutely disastrous to have uh, against a Life Stealer. Life Stealer's rage is just pointless against the Bad Rider. Glimpse comes back, gonna hit someone here. Silence here on net. This is the only, only thing they can do here. Bad Rider doesn't have his last over 20 seconds, sits in the static field. And it's gonna be an epicenter. Epicenter channel silence up on him. Mushi's just gonna beat him down right now. And the rock comes down onto Mushi. Mushi runs with the rock, so he might lose his ages here. Nope, not gonna lose his ages. Life Stealer tries to get the pick off here. Puck. Silence. This is going for the silence. Silence. We'll be breaking the ages and without uh, without a shadow blade. And BKB does come off cooldown, so he does have BKB. Will he go for the TP? Yes, he does go for the TP. No basher up on him. So there'll be no kill on Mushi Mushi yet. Forced to expand a BKB charge. But well, we'll get out of this alive. So bot Rex for a couple of heroes and the Sand King does die as well. So yep, Orange taking another big lead in this game. Uh, one good thing out of that, it does bring Mushi down to his second last BKB charge, so the, the duration of that is a lot shorter now. And they did the right thing, they did go straight in, go straight on uh, Extinct there on the Silencer, but by then, by the time they drop him down, it's too late, they've already lost three heroes, so... Well, they didn't, they didn't drop him off in time uh, before his Global Science came off, he's just a bit too tanky there, 900 HP on him. Uh, even if he did die, he did have the buyout for that, so... Yep, that fight just not going well. It's just the lineup. Yo In can try, but Orange will just have the stronger lineup. And Night is actually looking pretty good on net worth too now, so Life Still is still back behind Invoker, but you've got Night Stalker, Luna, both looking pretty pretty fat at the moment. Uh Heart coming out, I believe, for Ogle. Yeah, Ohio gonna get a river yeah. up. We're just gonna go for the bulkiness. Because he's just the guy running the front line, just uh, causing a lot of trouble in your face kind of hero whereas Luna will just be dealing the hurt to the towers Mushi doesn't really fight, he just fights at anyone that comes near him but meanwhile he just aims for the objectives picks off towers, picks off the wrecks That's a ghost set draft so on the silence as well now Korea died I wasn't, I wasn't sure what it had but I'm pretty sure it was one of Oh, one of Ninja Boogie's items. I'm not sure whose it was. It could be the Mystic Star from Invoker. He doesn't have any gold here. He could be the Mystic Star. So that's quite huge. Uh, to be denying the yeah, Hex from Invoker. He had 3k gold up in his uh, last time I checked him. So yeah, it could have been his item up there. Yeah, so it could have been the Hex on Invoker. So that's quite a huge pickup here from Mushi. No Hex for the next 3 minutes and they'll be pushing up. Uh, Mushi already expanding the, the Aegis. So not going to be worrying too much about it expiring now. Yeah, the silence has a lot, lot, got a lot more survivability now as well. He's got that ghost scepter up, so he can hang around the fights and be a pain in the butt just, just for longer as well. So long he throws out his global silence, he's, do it, he's done his job, actually. Even if they do burst him down in the end. Right now, the only counter would be to get BKB on everyone, and that's impossible. With the big deficit they are experiencing, with the gold as well as experience. Yeah, and that courier kill as well, like you said, slowing down Invoker, having that Mystic Staff. So they're really on the back foot. I mean, they're defending against three lanes worth of push at the moment. Luna, Mushi just charging down the middle, killing creeps, getting more farm. Yeah, he's probably Mystic feeling farm. very confident right now. With Three the, and a half pay gold. Yep. With the Manta up already on him. The Butterfly just making him take nearly no physical damage at all. So Lifestealer, not, <laughs> Lifestealer tries to hit him, but... Without an MKB, he's not going to be dealing a lot. And he's only sitting at the Sanjay here, not dealing enough damage to pick off the Luna. So at this point, it's Puck. just a matter of out-carrying, actually. Puck has a Sanj up as well. All going for Heaven's Hill, but I imagine. And did they change it uh, so that Heaven's Hill but can't be dispelled anymore? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. Glimpse goes out on Mushi, he gets caught in the kinetic field. I think I was trying to bait out a BKB charge, but nope, Mushi's a little bit more calm than that. Not gonna be popping that BKB. Gonna be getting out of there alive. 
And I mean, sure, Neil Ishanid, that they are getting a little bit of farm from these waves just getting pushed at them constantly. But meanwhile, the supports of Orange are just having a great time, getting a little bit of levels up, farm up in the jungle. Bat's been hanging out in the Radiant jungle the whole time. Oh, you have to admire no illusion for their diligence uh, and their perseverance. They do go for another smoke gang, uh, looking to pick off someone. And again, Life Stealer going to be sitting inside the Sanking this time. Sanking does go for a casual null, Radiant just to up his mana, uh, max mana a little bit more. Puck will be pushing away the Street Wave. They can't ignore this for long. So the smoke gang is going to be, it's going to be a failed one, I guess. And they, oh, Orange is just waiting for the next Roche. So going to be playing safe here. Not even going to go for any dives, respecting Neo Illusion International here. Going to get the Roche uncontested, most likely, unless Lei wants to pull something crazy, but I don't think he will. He's got the next bomb ready to go and the smoke, but th there isn't loads they can do. The smoke's worn off anyway. I, I think it'd be very risky for them. They might just try and... And they go for round two. The outside, so... They go for another yeah. smoke. Yeah, they go for another smoke. Um, but That's a satanic cup on Mushi. Loves his satanic. <laughs> this will possibly be the last fight. Um, I, don't, I, I, and I don't see them winning this. And here comes the bar strike on two here. Global Science instant follow-up. Yeah, and Lifestealer just doesn't have enough. He does get the rage but gets lassoed up. And here he will be beat down. Luna Lucent Beam on him. Gonna drop down to half health. Toggling the toggling the armlet just for a bit. Glimpse gonna send Night Stalker back out of the fight. Gonna snapping him on the call there. And KYXY gonna get counter sun track here, but a rock drops onto his head. And he does go down. And Ninja Boogie goes, gets hit by the eclipse. Is he gonna go down? Gets hit by another beam. So he will die here. No more. No more life stealer. And Lei gonna be silenced up by the last one. Lifted up by Net as well. Thrown back into the fight by the and here comes the silence here from Punk from Punk. Just doing what he can. Uh, gonna be escaping out of there, fine. And here comes Rubik. Steals up the Illusory Orb. We'll be sending the Orb back towards Punk and gets the hit on him as well. Double silence coming out on Punk. Punk's gonna go down. So Punk just time. not be able to do anything with this silencer. Just constantly silencing him up. Nice Doctor as well. Constantly applying pressure. And that was a... Once again, Bad Rider is the only one going down for that fight. It was a valiant effort, but uh, they lost three heroes and now Orange are gonna continue with what was always going to be an easy version now it's a little bit easier for them so seeing Mushi pick that up uh, he's just going to have a very very easy time pushing into their base for this next six minutes yeah Mushi already has the satanic as well as the ages so the next push will probably be unstoppable there they did get the jump on Neo in the perfect barrel strike here from the sand king as well hitting the two of the core heroes but I don't think just it's not going to be enough uh, and they're going to be pushing down the middle lane and this might be Neo in on their last steps you know last legs yep last legs although they're all not heroes are up that part. Yeah. and um. orange is respecting that look at Mushi or maybe he just likes the money it's possible he just likes the goal uh, he's just going to farm up top, not even going to push down the mid lane with the Aegis up on him. Just going to be applying pressure, just going to be putting the last nail in the coffin uh, for Neo In here. Neo In will be looking to fight this match, uh, fight this fight. Epicenter is off cooldown. He does have the bling dagger, so he can look for something spectacular. But with the Night Stalker sitting at 3000 HP, it doesn't look easy. And of course with the gem. So Heaven's Halberd's up on uh, Life Stealer, but not much else. And, and here comes another Barrel Strike. Moshi's gonna shrug that off and continue hitting the tower. And this time with the Satanic, he's not even afraid of the tower. He's just... Nope, he backs off for a moment there. Glyph forced the pop, and here you go. Here will be the last push of this game, most likely. And Orange gonna be hitting away at this tower. Looking to progress into the semi-finals. Bang away at the second set of Rex here, and... No in, are they gonna fight this? That's question about what to go for. Uh, yeah, here comes the pull here on Puck and it gets an instant hex out. And who gets the hex? Oh, Invoker gets the hex here on Bad Rider. Bad Rider goes down, so good fight here. And here comes the Eclipse, dealing a lot of damage here. Puck's gonna go down. Life Stealer gets Barrow striked up by the Rubik. Rubik just dealing such a good job here. And again, silence off on him. Life Stealer goes down. I expect the GG call to come up here. Mushi still has the Aegis. Here comes the Epicenter. Gonna be landing on everything, but Lei just gonna be standing there in the middle, going with this Epicenter. But Mushi and as well as Ohio just gonna be banging away at the same thing. Rubik picks up the kill. Yep, GG. Congrats again on the invite, brothers. Uh, they were invited to international, right? Uh, Orange, Orange were invited if Radiant I'm not wrong. Mid and happy birthday to come out. I think it's Ninja Boogie's birthday. Ninja Boogie's birthday, yeah. 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 yeah, Ninja Boogie's birthday. So happy birthday to him. And it's going to be GG 2-1 in this series. No Illusion International did put up a great fight. 
uh, in this quarterfinals. It's not even a grand finals, but it was pretty grand final material. Uh, it was a great fight. Orange came out on top, 2-1 uh, in favor of them. And this has been a really fun time. This has been a quarterfinal cast, and we still have more games to come. The semifinals as well, if I'm not wrong. Uh, semifinals coming up, or is it more quarterfinal matches? Not so sure, but. This has been really fun casting. If you, I'm not sure if you're gonna join me for the next one, but uh, I'm Lysander Zonora. I'm your, I've been your English caster for tonight, and you guys said it'd be slower at this part. So yeah, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitch. Both of them are Lysander Zonora. If you like my cast, uh, follow me on Facebook as well. Uh, it's also Lysander Zonora. It I make myself easy to find. And of course, my co-caster, uh, girl from Australia, Vix. Hi, and thank you so much for letting me jump in for these two best of threes. Uh, very very close matches. Good games to watch. I had a lot of fun casting out. Um, a little plug to my Twitter. Anyone wants to follow me out? It's Vixen Ixie, and uh, my Twitch channel is the same as well. All right, guys. This is the stat screen for all you, uh, all you guys that like the stats. And of course, uh, thanks for bearing with us. So this cast is one of our few times, uh, once the first few times I've been casting on uh, such a big audience. So really appreciate you guys just watching here. And yeah, we'll be. Coming back for another game, I think. Yeah, we we'll come back for another game. So stay tuned with us. Stat screen, and yep. Thanks for watching. Be right back. <laughs>